Today's horror manga dub and narration is Little Finger by Junji Ito. I'd like to take this time to give a very special thanks to Kara's VA. Check them out in the description below as well as pinned in the top comment. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into Junji Ito's Little Finger. I hope you all enjoy. As the youngest of four boys, I quickly learned my place in the world. It didn't hurt that I was short and ugly, at least not as much as their fists. It was good training. By the time I grew up, I knew how worthless I was, and I knew not to trust anyone. So, you see how, when she entered our lives, I was not the first to spread my arms and greeting. We might as well get acquainted. This boy's is your new mother. Everyone, it's good to meet you. She was young and beautiful. She called herself Tomie. Uh, hello. All of the brothers said, except for the one he thought to himself. Hmm, a gold digger if I ever saw one. Why else would she look twice at him? The man closed his eyes, deep in thought, but little did he know that Tomie had her eye on him. No sooner did she move in than the trouble began. My brothers regarded her not as their mother, but as a woman. It didn't take long for her to reciprocate either. Motherly love, indeed. I wonder if Dad ever knew. Something tells me he had his suspicions. One day, the three brothers were at the table, whereas the other brother was sitting all alone reading a book. They began to speak amongst one another. I'm still the oldest, and with Dad dead, that makes me head of the household. It's only natural I should inherit his wife as well. Look, have you really thought this through? Seriously, you can't. Can't believe I'm listening to this. What are you boys talking about? Huh? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> Always sticking together. Except for the youngest one. Hiroya, have you been left out again? Why don't you try and join in? Just leave me alone. No, I can't do that. Here's an idea. How about we go play a game of cards together? We can go up to my room if you want to be alone. The three other brothers looked in complete and utter shock. They couldn't believe what she was saying. Come on, let's have some fun. Let go! And then he stormed off all on his own. Don't mind him, Tomie. He's just warped, that's all. He's not worth your time. He's ugly, too. That's so... I think he's kind of adorable. Uh, what the? After that, I couldn't beat her away with a stick. She would bang at my door every night. I just sat and let her fume away. If she wanted to tease me, that was her business. I take it she wasn't used to being ignored. It must have been quite the blow to her self-image. Hater ya! What are you doing in there anyway? I can't believe you'd shut me out like this. What are you trying to do? Embarrass me? I've never seen such behavior in my life. I know you're not like this. Why can't you just open up? Soon enough, my jealous brothers intervened and put me behind an even sturdier door. Our protagonist was trapped all alone in that dark, dark room until he heard some faint footsteps approaching him. It was Tomie peering in through the barred window. She spoke. Poor you, Hiroya. The basement's no place for you. 
What awful brothers you have. You know they're fighting over me now. What do they think I am anyway? You know I care about you, right? Hiroya, are you listening? Hiroya, don't you like me? Even a little? Continued to peer through the bars, staring at him intently. And then, anger filled her eyes, and she asserted. Hmm. <laughs> You really are a lost cause, you know that. As if I'd ever fall for a lunkhead like you. You can just dry up in there. Bye bye She wasn't far wrong. There was nothing to eat or drink in the basement. And no one came down. There were some signs of life. Each night was graced with what sounded like a barroom brawl. <sighs> <sighs> This is bad. I'm going to starve to death. S someone, please. I need food, guys. Hey, brother, I need food. Hiroya, you can come out now. You can eat whatever you want as much as you want. But... I need you to do something. If you agree, then I'll unlock the door. Okay? Whatever. Whatever you want. Just get me out of here. Alright. Here's what we need you to do. He was then revealed to a scene of Tomie's completely mangled body that had been cut apart by a cleaver and various utilities. Each part of her was covered beneath blankets. Our protagonist spoke in shock. B brother what's going on? We wound up cutting Tomie to pieces. She ridiculed us, so we killed her. And so, I found myself on the highway with a van full of death. This is terrible. This is terrible. I really should just ditch this car and find some rock to hide under. You know, disposing of a corpse, it ain't as easy as you'd think. Sheesh, it's getting near sundown. But the poor man couldn't help but feel a little uneasy. I don't want to drive in the dark with this cargo. And so... He slammed on the gas and glanced behind him. But he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Somehow, Tomie's head was exposed. What? Okay, what's happening? Um, must just be the vibrations from the driving. He continued to drive down the dark, windy road. I'm in the middle of nowhere. This is it. Time to bury it before nightfall. I, I know, it's just a corpse. But is she watching me? <sighs> when he looked behind him, Tomie's body was now even more exposed, and her arm was reaching toward him. This, this is nuts. Vibrations are one thing. But is she really dead? Uh, holy shit! Uh, 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 crap! I can't move my... Uh, no! No! Let, let go! What the frickin' hell? Get off of me! Uh. Then, he reached behind him and grabbed a shovel. He slammed the object toward her fingers with a tremendous force, causing them to sever and fall toward the floor of the vehicle. He then struggled some more, flying out the side door. I spent the night in the woods. It was two days before I left the mountain. Half-starved, I wandered into a cafeteria 
It was there that I learned I was wanted for a crime of someone else's passion. Oh shit, it's my brothers. They must have framed me. Where do I go now? Even if I turn myself in, I doubt they left much to back up my side of the story. So, back to the mountains it was. After a while, I came across a cave. It seemed dry enough, so I adopted it as my makeshift home. The man flicked his lighter, igniting some twigs and leaves, creating a fire to keep him warm. <sighs> so cold. Hmm? What's this? How did these get in my pocket? Was it when I broke them off? Did they just fall in? All four together? By chance? That woman, by God, she really was a creep. I threw them into the fire. A month passed and our protagonist was cooking some sort of food on the fire and consuming it. Now that I'm used to it, this cave life isn't so bad. The farmers just leave their food for the taking. No one will come looking for me here. And just as well, it's nice to have some peace and quiet for once. Compared to living with my brothers, this is heaven. I might as well stay here forever. But comfort leads to sloppiness. I was spotted one night sneaking around a farmhouse. Desperate to get away, I made a leap. Hold it! I ran as fast as I could until I was out of breath. <sighs> oh crud, it's deep too. Shit, stupid, stupid, stupid. He bandaged his wound tightly, still out of breath. and the cave was pitch black, but our protagonist soon awoken. Uh, oh, Freaking hell, can't sleep with my leg like this. Uh, who the, cops maybe? No, that's not it. It's coming from the deep end. What in hell is? The man followed the sounds deeper and deeper into the cave, until finally arriving at the end, where he saw four strange women from behind. Who... who are you? When he took a closer look, something was horribly wrong with these entities' faces. They were completely burnt and mangled, not to mention the fact that their eyes were lifeless and their teeth about to fall out. You're so cruel. It's your own fault I look like this. What? I'm actually the best off. Look at them. Oh, shut up, Index. You were just lucky you didn't get burned so much. And look, I'm still better off than Pinky. Yeah, let's see it, Pinky. Show him your lovely face. Pinkies are so thin and dainty. She got the worst of it. <laughs> Poor little Pinky. <laughs> Index? Pinky? Fingers? I don't... I don't understand. But they continued to laugh. And eventually, they pulled the hair of the one that was the most mangled and decrepit, continuing to laugh, their laughter echoing all throughout the cave. Fingers? Fingers? Is it something to do with Tomie's fingers? Come to think of it, their voices, they sound just like her, and their faces, or what's left of them, they're burnt. But that woman, that Tomie. <sighs> Bad fever. Cut must be infected. 
Uh, the bus. Uh -huh. <laughs> they continued to laugh at him. Serves you right. Call it just a retribution. Look at me. Don't you think I'm getting prettier? Chalk it up to metabolism. Yeah, well, I'm not so far behind. It's not too late to pass you. Me too. On the other hand, little Pinky, you haven't improved at all, my dear. <laughs> Poor little Pinky Finger. You're so scorched. I do believe you'll stay the way you are forever. <laughs> uh -huh. Huh. For the next several days, I was treated to a show of torture and abuse. Hey, hey, ugly duckling. Monster. You disfigured lump. <laughs> the other three entities continued to laugh at the one they called Pinky, pulling her hair from all different directions, as the poor creature screamed in agony. It. I'm telling you to stop already! Let go! Pink. He grabbed Pinky, and the two of them tumbled backwards, and then he said, Alright guys, that's enough. Just leave Pinky alone. Got it? <sighs> Whatever. Acting like a white knight. You're just a wanted criminal. <laughs> Bucks of a feather stick together, eh? Quack, quack. Apart from Pinky, the fingers all improved rapidly, their skin turning delicate and sheer, until they all were the spitting image of Tomie. One by one, they left the cave, as each achieved her full beauty. I remained barely conscious, with poor... Ugly Pinky, the two of us all alone, until she called for me. Eroya, at last, we're alone together. Yeah, hey, Pinky, good riddance to them, huh? I know how you must have felt, I've been there myself. Hiruya, I love you. I said I loved you. Do you love me, Hiruya? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Actually, yeah, I've, I've never felt this way before. Little finger, I do love you. Please stay beside me. Forever. <laughs> oh dear. So this is the type you go for? I finally found something to tease you about. Uh, it was fun. <laughs> After that, Pinky improved rapidly. And then, when she had healed enough, Though I had but a few days left to live, she left without a moment's hesitation. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to take this time to give a very special thanks to my Patreons and YouTube members. Sarah De Jesus, Moto Surf, Leo, Dason Animus, Minyu Wei, Rich Harris, Andre Wolf, Tanya M, Kago, and Voodoo. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, you're important and you matter. Have a good night, everyone. Goodbye.